Has the metagame stabilized? Is Demira Scaminator too good? Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome to Last Month in Legacy. I'm going to break down the full Legacy metagame from the month of March, including win rates. Many folks are concerned about the state of Legacy, with Orcish Bowmasters, Grief, and Demira Scaminator running rampant. Is this deck, or are these cards overpowered? That was a big question I wanted to answer because of the discourse on the topic in the community at large. Because I'm a numbers guy, I wanted to see the data and use it before I formed my opinion. This data would not be possible without the Legacy Data Collection Project and Joe Dyer. They have provided all the MTGO Legacy match results that allowed me to determine these win rates. All metagame sourcing was done manually by myself using publicly available info on the MTGO website, in addition to the information from the Legacy Data Collection Project. Let's start by looking at the Orcish Bowmasters data, its win rates, and its metagame saturation. Orcish Bowmasters was found in roughly 37% of all decks, and it had a win rate of roughly 52.75, 52, 52 three-quarters of a percentage. Blue decks made up more than half of the Bowmasters decks, with non-blue fair and land-based strategies making the next largest segment at 12.5% of the Bowmasters decks. The remaining decks are a wide assortment of other things, from Esper Vial to Helm Combo. Based on these numbers, it's a highly played card, and it has positive win rates over the course of the month. Bowmasters also slots into many, many decks, and it adds benefit to many different archetypes, leading to this high play rate. The line between this is a good card and this card is overpowered can be kind of difficult to suss out, and it really does depend on a somewhat subjective threshold of what win rate you're looking for before you determine that it's too good or what saturation is too high. In my opinion, it's not ban worthy at its current performance and saturation. Its performance is good, but it's not oppressive, and it is highly played, but in a wide variety of decks with a huge range in archetypes. The card is played highly because it's good, but more importantly, there are minimal deck building costs in order to include it. All you need is black mana. Grief is up next. It's played primarily in Scam and Reanimator decks. We find it in roughly 23% of the field, and it has an overall win rate of 52.5%. 75% of the Grief decks are variations of Demir-based Scam decks. Roughly 20% of these Grief decks are dedicated Reanimator lists. They make up about 5-ish percent of the total field. The remaining Grief decks are non-blue Scam decks and assorted Rogue decks. Based on these numbers, I don't think that there's any data-driven argument to ban it, it's played in a bunch of decks, it wins slightly more than expected, but there are lots of cards that fit that particular criteria of being played and winning more than they lose. It's a much more focused card in terms of what decks can play it in order to support Grief, these decks usually have to play both Troll of Cause of Doom and Reanimate. Because Grief requires as many as 12 slots in order to support it, there are many fewer decks that include it. If the best Grief deck right now, Demira Scaminator, turns out to be overpowered, I imagine that Grief would be the card banned, as it's the card that players have the most negative feelings towards. Speaking of Demir Risk Aminator, let's look at the overall metagame, and then we'll revisit the potency of this deck once we have more context later on. To examine the metagame at large, we're going to look at data that was collected from 5,934 Magic Online matches played in a combination of different events. Legacy Challenges, the March Showcase Challenge, the March 1st Last Chance Qualifier, and the Legacy Showcase Qualifier that fed into the Pro Tour. The most played decks are Demira Scaminator, Teamer Delver, Turbo Goblins, Grixis Delver, Dedicated Reanimator, Lands, Blue Green White X Beans, so 4C and 5C Beans, Moon Stompy, Doomsday, and Boros Initiative. Demira Scaminator was the most played deck in March, it made up 11.3% of the metagame, and posted an impressive 54.5% win rate over the course of almost 800 matches played. Its strong matchups include Turbo Goblins, Reanimator, the Beans decks of assorted varieties, Initiative, and Doomsday. Its poor matchups were Dark Depths decks, including Lands and Green White Depths, Grixis, and Teamer Delver. Teamer Delver made up 8.7% of the field. It had a slightly above average 51 and a quarter percent win rate over the course of about 400 matches. It's strong versus Demira Scaminator, the Stompy decks like Initiative, Goblins, Moon Stompy, and most of the combo decks like Doomsday, stuff like that. It did have poor matchups against Reanimator, Grixis Delver, Saltai, and the various 4C and 5C Beans decks. 
Turbo Goblins made up about 7.5% of the field. It had a slightly better win rate at 52 and a third, roughly speaking, over the course of approximately 450 matches played. It's pretty strong against the Beans decks, and then it's a sort of stompy mirror, so it tends to be able to go bigger than both Moon Stompy and Initiative, and then it's able to pressure lands pretty quickly. Had a good matchup there. Relatively poor performance against Demira Scaminator and both Teamer and Grixis Delver. Grixis Delver made up 6.5-ish percent of the metagame, had an impressive 55% win rate, so even better than Demira Scaminator over the course of 400 matches played. Strong versus Demira Scaminator, assorted combo decks. It's favored in the Delver Mirror, so it's favored against Teamer Delver. Good against the assorted Beans decks, Turbo Goblins, and Initiative. It did not have good matchups against the Moon Stompy deck. Various land strategies, including lands and depths, non-blue fair decks like Maverick and Cradle Control, and it also didn't have great matchups against the Painter decks. Reanimator has been a pretty big metagame player for the last while. It has fallen a lot since people moved over to Demira Scaminator, so it made up about 5% of the metagame, had a 48.5% win rate, so that's below expected, below average. This is over the course of 300 matches played is where these results come from. It really only went positive against Teamer Delver, Assorted Beans decks, Lands, Moon Stompy, and Omnitel, but basically everything else it went negative against, so especially against the various scam decks that include Reanimate and then Grixis Delver. Dedicated Lands made up almost 5% of the field. It had a very impressive 55.5% win rate. Just under 300 matches played, it had strong results against Demir Scaminator, both Teamer and Grixis Delver, 4C Beans, and the assorted other fair decks. It did not do well against the Moon Stompy or the other Stompy decks, and it also didn't particularly do well against various combo decks like Doomsday. Blue Green White X Beans is, it's taken a lot of metagame share away from the Salt Eye Beans decks in the last month. Made up just under 5%, 4.7% of the field. Uh, it had a pretty abysmal 42 and 3 quarters percent win rate, which is very bad for a deck that's played this highly. This was over the course of approximately 250 matches played. It had good matchup results against only Teamer Delver and Green White X Steps. And then it, it had pretty poor results against Demira Scaminator, Grixis Delver, Lands, Turbo Goblins, Moon Stompy, Salt Eye Beans, and Painter. So lots of bad matchups there. But we'll circle back to this in a bit. It had some interesting results in another tournament that we'll look at later on. Moon Stompy made up just under 4% of the field with a 54% win rate. This is over the course of 250-ish matches played. Strong versus Riskaminator, Grixis Delver, the assorted Beans decks, Lands, and Green White X Depths. It didn't have good matchups against Teamer Delver, Turbo Goblins, Rhinos, the assorted Painter decks, and Death and Taxes. Doomsday is sort of like the top tier of the spell-based combo decks right now, made up 2.5% of the field, 51 and a third percent win rate, so a little bit positive, roughly 150 matches played. It was strong against Reanimator, Lands, 4C Beans, and Death and Taxes, and then it was pretty weak against all of the decks that beat up on combo, so the assorted Demir Scam decks, including Riskaminator, the Delver decks, both Teamer and Grixis. Rounding out the top of our metagame, we have Boros Initiative coming in at just about 2% of the field. It had a slightly below average 48% win rate over the course of 150 matches played. It was pretty strong against Reanimator, Lands, the assorted Beans decks, and Death and Taxes, but it did do poorly against Demir Scaminator, both the Delver decks, Moon Stompy, and Turbo Goblins. So it's got a different matchup spread than the other Stompy decks. Is it where you want to be right now? Unclear. Outside of the sort of top metagame contenders, we've got both some good and some bad decks that I want to particularly highlight. These decks didn't make up a very large percentage of the field, so these are 2% or below represented in terms of field saturation. We've got Green White X Depths that had a very, very impressive 57.5% win rate. This is only over the course of 120 matches played, but it put up very impressive results against Mirror Scaminator, the assorted Delver decks, and then the classic Blue Black Scam deck. It did put up poor results against Turbo Goblins, the Beans decks with white, so that would be Blue-Green-White-X, Beans, and 4C-5C. 
cauldron painter. So that's painter with Agatha's soul cauldron, often including the Phyraxian devourer combo, was about 2% of the field, had a pretty impressive 54% win rate over the course of 120 matches played. It put up strong results against the Delver decks, Turbo Goblins, Initiative, Moon Stompy, Reanimator, and then the 4 and 5 CB stacks. It didn't do well against Demira Scaminator and some of the fast combo decks. Stifle Knot's gotten some, some love recently. It was uh, 1.5%, 1.75% of the metagame. It had a pretty impressive 55.5% win rate over the course of 75 matches played. So this is even, even a smaller sample size than for some of our other decks. It had pretty strong results against Demira Scaminator, Turbo Goblins, and Lands. It did not have such great results against the 4 and 5C Beans decks, Moon Stompy, and Classic Scam. Speaking of Classic Scam, so Classic Scam was about 1.5% of the field. It almost broke 57% as a win rate, 56.8, over the course of 75 matches played. It was strong against Reanimator and Doomsday, and then it lost in the Turbo Goblins and Painter matchups. Death and Taxes was just under 2% at 1.8% of the field. It had a 53.5% win rate, which is pretty solid. Over the course of roughly 100 matches played, it was strong versus Teamer Delver, Reanimator, and Moon Stompy, and then it was weak against Doomsday. One of the cool things that I saw when I was looking at this data is that Death and Taxes had a lot of close or relatively even matchups, so it looks like it's pretty competitive and player skill probably makes a lot of difference in terms of your personal results. I really like this and I, I want to highlight it specifically because I've seen a lot of discourse of people being like, Orcish Bowmasters made Death and Taxes unplayable. And I, I think that that data is, I think that sentiment is overblown. Death and Taxes is clearly still performing well. It's had some challenge top eights and stuff like that. If you want to play Death and Taxes, if it's the deck that you own, play the deck, have fun. It seems like it's a perfectly playable deck right now. Moving on, we've got uh, Mono Black Aggro Scam. It made up roughly one and a third percent of the field. It had a pretty impressive 53.5% win rate over the course of roughly 75 matches played. It was pretty much strong just versus Demira Scaminator. And then it didn't have great matchups against the Delver decks, both uh, Teamer and Grixis, and against Moon Stompy. Let's look at some of the worst decks based on, uh, on their results. So if we look at just the just the metagame breakdown from the entire month and their associated win rates, the blue-green-white X, or 4C and 5C Beans decks, was pretty bad based on that. We, we looked at that in terms of its overall win rate being a low 40% number, even though it was representing almost 5% uh, of the metagame. But it did also claim both first and second place at the tournament that fed into the, uh, the Pro Tour. So clearly top level players can play this deck to very high level success against other top players. So I think that there's a lot more nuance going on and specifically this deck's matchup and results here worth exploring further. Other decks that uh, did not do very well were Creative Technique and Omnitel. Both had underneath of 40% win rates. So if you're looking to if you're looking to crush, I think that these dedicated linear combo decks are maybe not the place to be. Let's touch on league results briefly. As always, remember that league data only represents the 5-0 results, and so we're really limited in what kinds of conclusions we can draw from it. Demira Scaminator has been dominating leagues and increasing in share every week. Lands was the next biggest deck peaking in week 3 of March. Turbo Goblins is holding on to third place, increasing in share over the month. Both Grixis and Teamer Delver were holding steady, but dropped a little bit during week four. Seems like players switch out between those two decks, depending on sort of, I don't know, general vibe, perhaps. Blue Green White X Beans had a really large presence in week one, but it dropped pretty heavily after that, likely due to the hype around Triumph of St. Catherine being released at the last week of February. And then I guess players explored and decided that they didn't like the deck as much. Stifle Knot and Reanimator are the other two decks that were the most successful and the top eight sort of decks that were that had the most results in leagues. Below that, we've got many decks with Moon Stompy, Green White X Steps, Painter, Salt Eye Beans, Doomsday, and Saga Storm, all making up more than 2% of these results. I mentioned the tournament that fed into the Pro Tour earlier, so let's take a look at that. So it was the, uh, the Magic Online Showcase Qualifier, where the winner gets a slot at an upcoming Pro Tour. This was an event where you had to qualify in order to play in it, so there were only 29 players fighting for this Pro Tour slot. It was a 5-round tournament with a cut to top 8, 
Congratulations to Eco Baronin for winning with the Dark Bant Beans deck. So a 4C Beans deck, splashing black instead of red for Orgish Bowmasters and a couple of other cards. The metagame for this event was really quite interesting. Keep in mind everything that we've seen so far in regards to win rate and archetype representation. Compared to the overall metagame, these top tier players have made some seemingly unexpected deck choices. Team Redolver was the most played deck, followed by Turbo Goblins and Green White Axe Depths. There were two copies each of 4 and 5 C Beans decks, two copies of Moonstompy, Demir Scaminator, and Stifle Knot. The rest of the metagame were all single copies of the following decks Breakfast, Grixis Delver, Creative Technique, Delver Scams, that's like Demir Delver with the Scam Package, Dedicated Reanimator, A Cast, Lands, and Broadside Artifacts. It is really interesting to see that a large number of these high level players in a very important event did not elect to play Demir Scaminator. The most successful archetype in this event were the 4 to 5 C Beans decks that claimed both top slots. This is in stark contrast to the rest of the month in terms of the performance of these 4 C Beans decks. Now that we've explored all of the different metagames and a couple of different tournaments, let's go back to Demir Scaminator and the question of is it too good. There's a lot of semi-conflicting pieces of data here. It's gaining metagame share in leagues over the course of the month, showing an increase in both popularity and success. Looking at win rates and overall metagame results, it shows that the deck is good, but there are many other decks that have similar or better win rates. There are many other decks that are performing at a similar level, lots of decks that have strong matchups against it without compromising their win rates against the rest of the format. The showcase qualifier is particularly interesting to me as the top level players at the top level of competition on Magic Online they overall elected not to play this deck, despite it being sort of the consensus pick for the best deck in Legacy right now. I do think that it's the best deck, but I do want to see how the metagame evolves over the next month or so. If we thought that this deck was truly the best place to be, I think that most of those players would have played it, and we would have seen a lot of mirror matches, and we would have seen a lot of mirror match-focused sideboard tech. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. If you want to check out more of my work, check out the comprehensive breakdown that I did last month of every scam deck in Legacy, or feel free to subscribe to see my future work. I think I'm going to wind down on doing weekly metagame updates now that the metagame has stabilized around Demir Risk Aminator, but I do intend to do a monthly breakdown based on this information. Thank you so much to Joe Dyer and the Legacy Data Collection Project for the information that enabled me to create this video. Um, really could not have uh, created win rates without uh, without the screenshots that the MTGO players provide to Joe and then Joe scrapes into the match results. Just would not have been possible without that team. So thank you so much. Um, please let me know what your thoughts are around these various cards, Orcish Bowmasters, Grief, Demira Scaminator, what, uh, what you think is going to happen in the metagame next, and please always share any feedback around what I could be doing differently or better. Love to hear from y'all. Thank you so much. Have a great day.